Hello, well, today I'm joined by a special guest, someone who I've never had on the channel before, and it's been long overdue. Um, so welcome, George, Hello. to the channel. Thank you very much. You might have seen me pop up once or twice in, in a little snippet, but um, yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be here. So, um, George, over the past couple of years, like me, has been uh, on the on the YouTube grind as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Not as hard as you the whole time, <laughs> but we started January twenty twenty one. So, yeah, nearly yeah, coming up two years now. So, um, no, yeah, definitely, good. definitely, a lot has changed. So, um, but today I thought we'd finally do a video together. Um, when this video comes out, you'll probably see snippets of it before this. But um, I was just going to ask George a couple questions, share mm. our because we have a very much, we're very much like-minded when it comes to a lot of things. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of things. So I'd be, I thought it'd be good to get someone else's perspective, and um, yeah, especially because George has recently quit his job. Yep. <laughs> to go yep. traveling. So just explain a bit about that. Why you're doing that, and uh, yeah, your reasoning behind yeah. doing it. All right. Well. There's a short answer and a long answer, but I'll go for the interesting one. So, yeah, like, I was an estate agent. I was doing it for 10 months um, uh, locally, half an hour drive away from me. It's really good, and I just kind of reassessed my options. I spoke about it in my recent vid, just quitting my job as an estate agent to travel the world, and I thought, 21, no strings attached. Mm. Now's the best time, so... Yeah, no, I'm loving it. And then I'm leaving on the 4th of Jan, and I quit at the end of August, so there's quite a period where I haven't been at a job. But I'm now back at Tesco's at the moment, which was another part-time job. I um, So that's how you're funding did. this, because that's going to be yeah. the next... So, yeah, I mean, obviously there's stocks, which I'm not planning on liquidating, <laughs> and I know you wouldn't either if you are doing the same thing. Um, I mean, there was some money I had for day trading, which I'm, I'm going to use for traveling. But my main portfolio, I'm keeping the same. Mm. Um, and yeah, the rest I just saved up. Um, I'm not taking that much with me in comparison to what the average traveler would take. I'm taking roughly six grand, five, six grand after I book my flight. You're taking that, so, in, what you're taking all that cash with you. Yeah, being in my bank. So, um, yeah. And that will cover everything. How long do you reckon that will last, though? Um, well, it depends ultimately on what kind of experience you're going for while you're out there. Because some people that want to live at large mm. and they stay at hotels and they're drinking a lot, they'll spend a lot, a lot more. Whereas hostels, I recently booked. And this is the only thing I've booked since, like, to, when I actually get there, is my first three nights of accommodation, and that cost me twenty eight quid for the first three nights in a hostel and I thought £10 a night if I'm doing £10 a night at a hostel if I bumped up a little bit instead of £9.30 or whatever it is that's £300 a month I go there for five months £1.5 grand um, five months yeah five months £300 a month if I was doing it at £10 a night one and a half grand and I thought I could easily scab it out for mm. like £20 a day if I wanted to but it depends if I want to do um, like excursions and activities when I'm there. Like, so what's your plan out there for income? Um, well, you could either work locally or you can work so you don't make an income, but you don't spend anything. And okay. there's, um, this isn't a promotion, by the way, but there's um a company which I found called World Packers, and they've just made a platform where hosts and travellers can go and speak to one another. So basically, for as an example, one of them is like um, like a little family-run hostel. Um, they set up their page on World Packers and they advertise it to travellers. And the job they offer was you work in the hostel, I think, four hours a day, two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. You look after the hostel owner's child just as a bit of like daycare or whatever, maybe do a couple of cleaning chores or whatever, mm. six days a week, and then the rest of the time you got to yourself. But um, instead of them paying you, they let you stay there um, every night of the week and they give you some free meals and stuff like that and discounts. So 
instead of earning any money, you're just stopping from spending. So what I said about £10 a night at a hostel, that could just be bought down to zero, and then obviously I get discounts elsewhere. So long term, I feel like that's quite a good way of doing it. So out of that 6000 would you say you would eat into all of that throughout this whole trip? Um, well, being the saver, long-term, beneficial <laughs> like mindset, like, I don't know, kind of guy that I am, I don't want to eat into any of it. If I yeah. can, the dream is to just go not spend any of it and still maintain a good income while I'm there, which is why drop shipping and other online sources of income like youtube and tiktok theme pages i'm sure we'll speak more on that <laughs> later on in the podcast uh very attractive because if you can get a western world income like yeah. british money converted into thailand money oh sorry hit the mic there british money into thailand money you're making a very good return yeah um because street food is like i'm not even joking you can buy a whole meal and thailand currency is baht um, B A H T is a weird one, but um, you can buy a whole meal for like a pound, like on street food. Wow! So you can literally feed yourself if you wanted to for a day for three quid, depending if you what route you want to go down. So if you're earning, like obviously you've done videos on TikTok theme pages, and I've started my. You literally on the day we're recording this, Ben did drop a video about his <laughs> theme page, um, getting banned, which happened to me as well. We'll speak more on that later. But if you're earning five pound a day british money and you Mm. can go and spend that in thailand you're literally getting at least five or six times the value of what you would get if you'd spend it in the uk because a meal deal here is like 350 now whereas you 350 in thailand could literally get you like a free course meal probably not that much but a lot to fill you up for even less of the money so and what about in terms of the most expensive thing would be getting there yeah what was that like the flight so um like at the moment i'll just quickly say like my content is a shift between finance and travel and stuff we'll get more onto that in a bit and i've done a video on how to get cheap flights on google flights and skyscanner and my one-way flight cost me 589 pounds and on Google Flights, you can look at the best times and the cheapest days and stuff like that. And there's other little methods you can go about it. But that was definitely the most expensive part. Um, I know a lot of people which have managed to get them cheaper, though. They've got like £400 return flights. But if you book way in advance, you get it a lot cheaper. And there's times of days which are cheaper as well, which is like 5am UK time is the best time to actually go on there. And if you use a VPN, you can get it cheaper as well. And if you set your VPN to, well, like LIDC countries and mm. then book it as if you were from that country, it gives you like 20, 30 pound off as well, which is crazy because, yeah. yeah, well, it just is what it is. But, but you've just bought a ticket going out there. You yeah. haven't bought return. No, I've booked the one way ticket. So I don't know when I'm coming back yet. Um, which obviously links into your question about how long do you reckon you'll last with money and how yeah. much you're going to bring because if I go out there... Um, well, what's the visa like? Can Is there is there like a limit? There must be a limit. Yeah. Um, six months, is it? Uh, no, it's not six months. But from October 2022 to March 2023, um, they changed it and they updated the laws to promote a bit of tourism following on from... I'm not going to say the <laughs> the cursed word. The yeah. Whether you want to bleep that, I'll leave it up to you because I don't know if it affects CPM and stuff. But um, they change it so anyone with a British passport can go there for 45 days without a visa, which is a month and a half. Then okay. if you, if you want to extend it, you can go to a Thai embassy and extend it for another 45 days for free or a lot of very cheap price, which is three months. So at the moment you haven't so, got a visa? Um, I don't need one. So yeah. I'll go there without one, and yeah. then I'll, my, I probably will extend it and, and get a visa extension um, or whatever, or pay for that extension visa. Um, and, yeah, just could stay there for another 45 days. But I'm going there with no plan. So, like I say, that's why the only thing I've booked so far is my flight and three nights of accommodation just to keep me sorted because a lot of people have said this at solo travel, just go with the flow because I mm. don't want to book like two weeks worth of stuff get there find a really great bunch of people that are 
I've got a better plan, cheaper, more fun, etc., etc. But then I've got all this stuff, but which I'll have to cancel or lose money on. So, um, yeah, which is why I'm going there with no plan. So, yeah, wherever I end up, I end up. I want to try go to Cambodia and Vietnam yeah, yeah. and stuff because they're the neighbouring countries. Vietnam recently introduced um, laws about. I don't know, can, yeah. we, can we mention it? The tax law. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I don't yeah. know what you want mentioned on on your channel, but yeah, where. Um, you can't have unless you're married to that person, which is ridiculous. Imagine that in the UK. <laughs> God, yeah. that would never be enforced. It's one of those things where for, for travellers it's hard uh, going over there, but it's just one of those things you just sort of have to respect, really, and you come yeah, in. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Well, um, Bali, is that on? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, Bali's further down south, but obviously the shorter the distance of the flight the cheaper it's going to be and thailand to bali isn't that far at all if you're going yeah. to bali you might as well go australia and if you're there i'm staying out there for years <laughs> i think british people can go there for i think two or three years now and just move and live there um i'm not saying that as a fact because i haven't looked into australia so, and stuff so so while you're out there depending on how it goes and everything mm. do you do you see yourself coming back to the uk after a certain period of time and then going into a job again or do you feel like right. do you find that would be <laughs> pretty difficult um oh, considering your situation i mean you, you're out there you, you're doing what you what you mm. want to do and if you've got an income that's sustainable for you to live out there mm. why why right. would you want to come back exactly and if i say if i went there for six months didn't build up a passive source of income with YouTube influence, not influencing. I hate using that term. <laughs> or like um, YouTube and other sources of income online. And I get some good deals with people and I network a lot. Um, if I don't manage to do that and I come back and I need money, mm. I don't want to go into a nine to five job. I just don't like. I'd rather go back to tesco's or something where i don't have to be as mentally focused on a day-to-day -day basis where i can come back and then just blitz more content because that's the issue i have when i was at um uh, my estate agent job like it's a sick job and that's what i mentioned in my video it's really good but that wasn't my main focus and that's not yeah. what i want to do long term so it was constantly bugging me um, every day I, when I got home, I could only make content for so long. I was like, right, I'm done. I'm burnt out because I'd do like 10, 11 hour days, come back, and that was it. I couldn't just sit there and make a video. I was gone. What, so. would, what would you say on, on that topic of uh, being an estate agent? Because a lot of people may be watching this. A lot of people that um, are my viewers are from America. They might be familiar with the... Mm with uh, the likes of, like Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, all yeah, that, yeah. Who, who have done it out in America for a bit of um, sort of like, I don't know, inside knowledge on here. Commission over here is a completely different story yeah. when it comes to that. The structure from the UK to America is completely different. I mean, in terms of the UK, you work for a company, you go in at a role. So I was a trainee sales negotiator, and that's pretty much the front line of it. So we'd speak to customers all the time. And the structure, how we'd get paid with commission, um, you, so I had, a, I had a team of four in the office. There was two negotiators, an admin, and a branch manager. And that branch manager was also the lister. And a lister is somebody that goes out and does valuations. They value properties. And they get a house on the market. They list it on Rightmove and Zoopla. And... Um, once a house gets listed, we'd start get calls coming in. We'd call out to people like on our customer base, on the database, mm. um, try getting around for viewings and stuff like that. And whichever customer ended up buying the house, um, each customer is registered by one of the negotiators. And whichever negotiator registered that customer and was the first point of contact would then get the sale as such. Okay. So, um. Yeah, and after each house is sold, like when it goes on the market, so I've just literally completely flipped it. <laughs> when it's sold, then it goes on the market. When it goes on the market, um, we charge a selling fee, right? Yeah, um, an agency fee. So let's say it's one percent. House goes on the market for four hundred thousand. We'd get one percent of four hundred thousand when it sells. 
and um so that's four grand and then the negotiators and it depends on the agent you work for what the commission is but let's say it's three percent the negotiator gets three percent of the one percent so there's 400 quid and we get three percent of that 400 quid which is jesus christ no no of that four thousand pounds sorry which is 120 pounds so the agent the whole agency would get four grand from the sale of a four hundred thousand pounds four hundred thousand pound house on a one percent fee and then the negotiator selling it would get 120 pound from that which doesn't seem too good but if you sell a house a week that's 480 pounds extra a month providing it's the exact same the selling fee in a house price um 480 pounds a month which you add on to your pay packet and the harder you work the better quality houses you get and the better fees you can charge as an agent the more you can earn from it so it but in the, terms of the salary though because the starting salary is i mean i'm not going to say exactly what it was for me okay because i guess it actually no i will so my starting salary was <laughs> i might as well <laughs> i mean it, they're also, not going to catch you in thailand yeah yeah exactly so my starting salary was 15 grand right and when i heard that i was like mate come on i want to be on more i wanted to ideally because i was leaving straight from tesco's at this point yeah um i wanted to go straight in at 18 grand just as a minimum because times are tough in the uk (laughs) as i'm sure we all know but just uh but from self-worth as well and when i had my interview and i got told 15 grand i was like oh come on because i applied for the job and it said competitive basic salary so i didn't state it right i couldn't see it at the start so i got told at the interview but once the commission was explained to me and how you make other well how you make money in other ways i was like right okay so i will be earning more than 18 grand once i start selling houses and get mortgage sign-ups and stuff like that that's another way you can earn money um through the whole mortgage size of the business and um yeah, so the starting basic was fifteen grand from a trainee sales negotiator, and then as time went on, I negotiated my pay and spoke to my manager. I'm not going to go into too much detail with that, but you really learn the job itself. You learn to sell anything, really, inc- yeah. including yourself. Yeah, which is a big point. Go a lot on. of a lot of people would argue that um, our sort of age, teen in your twenties, whatever, um, mainly people should focus on like skills and Mm. like a high income skill and being able to sell is probably one of the is up there 100 percent. so would you say that that's definitely something you've learned from doing that that's definitely yeah Yeah, definitely yeah Uh, i mean it's like wolf of wall street everybody on this podcast or who's watching this has to watch it or most definitely has watched yeah. wolf of wall street but it's like when he goes up to the crowd at the end and he says sell me this pen like you need to know certain tactics of how to sell something it's not just describing it like the people in the crowd did in wolf of wall street um it's creating demand for it. you got to, it's all supply and demand so go on if you had someone um look into they're interested in it would you say don't go into it then from the basis of earning money rather than do it for because you, you could compare it let's say uh, a job working in a supermarket at tesco mm-hmm. um you would say would you say like the pay is quite similar overall but then from the the state agency job because you've come out with the skills you can then now further um earn from from being able to sell and you'd say that's your main what well, main benefit of being yeah. in that job yeah yeah i mean I, I completely agree with what you're saying like every job i've had from whether it's starting from paper rounds moving up to a state agency um it's not the money which is the driving factor it's what else you can get from it like yeah you worked um in as some kind of waiting staff or at a local pub and i'm sure your confidence going in before that was quite low because obviously you've got big intimidating chefs and customers you speak to and um that was the exact same as me so i gained confidence from that um i mean people skills from tesco's and then you just take it to another level with a state agency and learning how to sell like big properties and also yourself is 
invaluable and at this age it's definitely the priority so for anyone looking into getting into any kind of job at this age or thinking of how to make money just work like you are your own, you are your own biggest asset yeah you, you have to build yourself up it's all up here all up there which is why reading so important providing you apply the knowledge to things after the books not just reading it and then putting it down and forgetting about it so yeah building yourself is the best thing to do from a young age because older people successful people will recognize it that you've got a more mature mindset that's not saying you can't have fun you can't go out and do stuff it's mm. all about having a balance and i wouldn't just go into a job if, if i saw a job now that was like 50 grand a year literally you could probably bump it up to 60 70 grand a year which was brain numbing stuff and I didn't speak to anyone all day and I just had to be in the office from like nine till six or something like that. I don't know if I could do it because I just, I don't know. And I gained no skills and I learned nothing from it. If I just had to sit down for that amount of time a day and do nothing and I just got paid that much, I genuinely don't think I could do it. It's not motivating. No, and you don't yeah. learn anything and you don't develop as a person. So I feel like once you start getting into those roles where you're active and you start developing and you mm. actually can see yourself improving in a lot of areas of your life it's so much better in terms of jobs so you so. wouldn't so after this you wouldn't could you see yourself working as an estate agent again yeah i could but i would have to really think about it and it depends where i am in life because learning about the housing market as a whole was a massive thing I took away from it because yeah. you understand the whole process and when I go to buy a house now I understand what's involved in it um, and why certain things are taking longer because solicitors and stuff like that which is another comparison to the American structure um, I haven't looked into the American structure too much but um, our, sale, our house sales can take like three to four months and that's how long it takes in the Gosh. UK which yeah. is ages and it's very difficult for first time buyers at the moment um, but this is all the stuff I've learned from pick, well, being, I've picked up from being in the job and there's still a, a lot of stuff which I haven't learned um, because I was only there for 10 months but you learn the most in, when you first go into it so going back into it there's still a lot of things which I could pick up but I don't know if I'd want to because the main reason I quit was to free up time for the main focus of my life, yeah. which is content creation, etc. So, so on the point of housing, where you live, mm, buying housing, yeah. um, what's your what's your plan with that? I know we've talked about like getting somewhere where all basically we've got a close group of mates, about six of us, yeah. all living together. Um, but yeah, what, what is your sort of ideal plan with that? Like, do you see yourself buying something? Uh, cause obviously you probably, I don't know. Do you want to rent? Are you, are you, <laughs> I think you know the answer to yeah. that, Ben, <laughs> but like, do you want to rent? <laughs> well, it's a good point. Um, that like, so obviously I rent, <laughs> I rent at the moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in yeah not the the nicest of places in the uk if anyone knows luton um yeah. there's another big person that's from luton yeah well sure you might have heard of him well, if yeah, you haven't heard of us uh the tate brothers um <laughs> they, they andrew tate his his argument on renting is that it does give you this more freedom mm. because if you're i buy a house today I would have to probably use most of my money, um, let alone, um, yeah, so I'd have to liquidate whatever I have invested, put down a mortgage, but I'm tied in. Oh, that's it. Like 30 years, I have to keep paying it. Mm. So I suppose with rent, there's the argument, okay, I'm paying for that, but then I could just move if I need to yeah. move somewhere else. And his argument is, if there's money somewhere else to be made, mm. I could go out and live in Dubai, could go wherever yeah. and rent. So there's only there's that argument to it, but then again, it's dead money. And with a mortgage, you are paying off um, arguably yeah. an asset. Yeah. So exactly. Um, but could you like could you see yourself buying somewhere in Avalon or not? It's hard at the moment. Yeah. Real wages are not aligned with house prices yeah. at all. 
And I learned that very quick when I was well, when I worked as an estate agent and buying my own property and renting. It's very good what you say, and I completely agree with the freedom of renting. And um, it depends on your income and if you can still plow a lot of money into assets at the same time. Because I think have you disclosed your income and how you allocate it in videos? Yeah, I mean my income. Uh, not yet basically my income so i'm i'm a, an apprentice actually at the moment or i'm on a on an apprenticeship program my income from that is about 21,000 a year yeah so give or take before tax 1,700 mm. um that's just for my salary now if i was to pay my rent is 525 and an average mortgage probably looking at similar to that for something that depends i mean if i was by myself it would probably be more it's very difficult yeah it's, it's hard because um if you're looking at like a two hundred thousand pound house let's just say 10 percent deposit that's still 20 grand and like yeah. you say if you don't really know what you're doing and you haven't got a good income to pay it off monthly it's going to be rough and a lot of people aren't staying together at the moment as well. Yeah. Like we had a couple of situations where somebody was had an offer accepted on buying a house, literally about to move in, and then they split up with their partner, and the guy couldn't get a mortgage by himself because his income couldn't afford it, and they had to pull out. Well, they already had a mortgage together. Yeah, they had an agreement in principle. So from their mortgage broker, um, they had it all agreed this percentage for like however long um like a five year um contract how much they're gonna pay back each month and um yeah they split up so obviously you're not gonna move in with somebody that you've just broken up with and he tried going back with a mortgage broker and seeing if he could pay it off himself with just having one income instead of two and he couldn't do it so he had to pull out and we had to find a new buyer within like a week luckily we managed to do it <laughs> on the day before that was probably one of my proudest moments as an agent because i had one viewing the day before the deadline because it was all tied up in a chain there was like three or four properties all in the chain and a chain is basically for those who don't know it's the whole list of properties which are involved with buying and selling one another so you could be at the bottom of the chain you could be a first-time buyer you're not selling a house you're the bottom or you could have somebody right at the top who's the top of the chain and they've just passed away and their son or daughter is selling the property for them. And right. they're, obviously they're not buying on, so that's where the chain ends. But everybody else in between is selling their house and buying the next one. And it could get very complicated. And these people were like, it's in like even the middle of the chain of like three or four people. And um, the peop they had an offer accepted on their house and uh, the sellers of that house said, right, you've got a week because we've got people above us that are waiting. If you can't do it in that time, we'll have to pull out. We're like, right, <laughs> we've got a um, proper go for it. And it was the day before we got another offer accepted, which was really good. But linking back to my point, sorry, I, got, I went a bit off track there. That's right. Um, a lot more people are splitting up now, and it's hard to put a deposit down and move in by yourself if you haven't got somebody else which is going to join or pull their money together which mm. is one of the things that the Tate brothers do themselves they pulled all their money together and they shared a lot of the stuff um, a lot of the things they own they still do it now well even now think of their what they're worth what they have um, cash wise mm. they still live together because their argument is that the environment they live in as well living yeah. with with guys as well makes it competitive makes it yeah. keeps them sort of exactly yeah give me 50 push-ups yes <laughs> when you wake yeah, up yeah. And stuff like that which is what you mentioned about us not moving into a place to go basically there. yeah um it would be amazing we'd wake up and we'd be so productive it'd be brilliant and it's so much better because even if we were renting and we we're paying 500 pounds a month 
whatever. Number one, you've got the freedom. Number two, you've got the experience of living with each other. Number three, productivity goes through the roof because we're not getting back and watching TV. Yeah. We're building websites. We're starting businesses. Like, we're going all out. So... As soon as we know one of us is slacking, yeah, yeah. they're like, they're getting woken up <laughs> by bowl bowl of water yeah. on the face or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's a good point. I think... Um, there's no shame, though, in people wanting to live their parents as long as possible. I think oh, as well, yeah, I, I know it's not, it's not, from my point of view, so I've only moved out a uh, couple months, really, four months. Mm. And coming back, I found it a little bit hard because I don't like the thought of being mothered. Um, I've only come back just for Christmas. But um, it you get used to sort of okay you wake up you can do whatever you want you are in charge yeah Yeah, exactly and i think like that's the only thing i'd say for people that you have to go do at some point like you do need that because it gets a point where you're saying with your parents you will become lazy at certain things yeah you i don't know what your parents are like but your washing might be done cooking might be done yeah you gotta do having to do all of it yourself you you're just you're thinking more switched on and you, it makes you want to have to manage your time better. Yeah. Um, so I work nine, five as soon as I'm done Ooh. at five, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I'm done at five, um, it's like, right, what have I got to do tonight? Right. I might have to do a, a clothes wash. Okay. I could do that later. That'll be 20 minutes. Right. I've now mm. got a certain amount of hours. I can record a vid. I can edit yeah. whatever, I, whatever needs doing. Um, so you prioritize your time more. Whereas if you're living at home with your parents, the only argument is with that you're you can wake up, you might work, but then it's like you might have a bit more time because you haven't got to worry about as much. Yeah. Um, oh, so true. you do have to you do have a lot more responsibility, and you've got to pay for things yourself. And also that's another thing by paying for things yourself and being responsible for that. Uh, you, you're probably more likely to come better managing your money because yeah. you've got less of it. Yeah, you value it more as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, I try. I've what I personally do. I actually have a uh, a Google Docs sheet of mm. everything that I spend and all of my income as well. Um, because I, at the end of the month, the last thing anyone should be doing is not knowing where it's gone. Yeah, exactly. And for me, and you, you might be the same, but I'm definitely. I take to the extreme. I don't like having cash. I, I never have money. Whenever we go, I'm the person that yeah, doesn't yeah. have any money because um, it's invested. Yeah, it's well, a, there's it's that. It's it's that. Um, but it's also I like the thought of okay, in my bank, I will give myself like five pounds, and it, <laughs> I I will have five pounds right today. I can wake up right. I've only got five pounds to spend. So you you can't see thinking, well, I can't buy this, I can't buy, and it forces yourself to to save. Yeah. It forces yourself not to spend as much, and um, uh, and manage it better. I like, for example, a normal day, I go to work. We have a really good thing. At, um, so I actually work for Turi, the travel company, uh, at their head office in Luton, and we have a big canteen there, mm. and food there is just ridiculously cheap. So I prefer to do it it might be one or two pounds for a whole meal i will know that i've only got that amount of money to spend on that and it's like right i cannot buy anything more for the day like i can't spend money yeah. like coffee whatever make it at home i i'm not my one dollar breakfast yeah 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 exactly little, little plug here yeah, yeah, <laughs> anyone yeah. that wants to go and watch yeah it. exactly like i i yeah. i I mean, my average week, I spend about fifteen pounds on food. Like it's it's nothing, yeah, mate. I don't even spend that. Obviously, Pasta, pizza, sixty six p pizza from Lidl. Right, is what you said about living with parents, and it's not taking it for granted if you know if you're aware of it and you can um, still, I don't know, be responsible yourself because. Yeah. With the washing and stuff like that, my mum does it at the moment, um, but I'm fully prepared to do it, and I know how to do it, because a lot yeah. of people surprisingly don't. They don't know how to do I was one of them. I'd never chores. used a washing machine before. Yeah. It, I'd, I've never needed to. Yeah, exactly. So. But not everybody's obviously mothered in that sense, but... Yeah, my parents are still on it and they'll pick me up on it and I'll have to do chores around the house and it's not yeah. like I'm earning pocket money and stuff. It's just like I'm a fully grown adult still living at home. Yeah. And 
you're right, nobody should have any shame in living at home at the moment, especially now, because it's very hard for people to move out that are our age, as I mentioned before. But, um, From- yeah, like, what you said about living cheap and food and stuff, I work at Tesco's. I work in a full supermarket. If I wanted to get a meal deal, it takes me 10 seconds to get it. I, I never buy meal deals. Never. Loads of people do it on their breaks. That's free. Well, with a club car, £3 a day with a discount, £2.70 a day. Let's say, if, say if you work a 9 to 5, 5 days a week, and you get a meal deal every day, that's £15 a week on meal deals. That's £60 a month. You times it by 12, you're spending a few hundred quid a year on meal deals. That's a lot of money if you add it up. My dad makes a big, big batch of pasta at the start of every week. I'll put it in a pot, bring it in, grab an apple, two satsumas or whatever, and then whatever else is free in a colleague's staff room will have that. I spent nothing on lunch. <laughs> and luckily, breakfast and dinner um, is provided by my family, like in terms of the food that's in the house. I'll contribute towards that with rent, but um, that rent is a lot less than if I'd be living... Um, like you are, like yeah. if you're living um, elsewhere. So I'm not going to say how much I pay in rent, but it's in relation to my wages and stuff like that. But it's not £500 a month, which is what you're paying. I know you have to disclose that as well. I yeah, that, that's, you're paying in, in that's rent. my biggest out, so. outgoing though, definitely. Because another thing, I don't drive. I have a license. I've driven for two years, had one accident along the way. I wrote one, my first car off. Oh, yeah. Um, that was interesting. <laughs> I got all my money back for that, but I had to, I lost out obviously on the the no claims discount. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, so I, I completely stopped driving and I've saved a fortune with that. I mean, my outgoings, how I, how I budget it. If I'm looking at it from my salary, I split it into thirds. So after tax, you're looking at one and a half thousand. £500 rent, £500, uh, a minimum, I always invest £500 a month as a minimum, um, and I have done for however long, Mm. Um, and then £500 I leave to spend, well that's over 100 a week, and I don't spend that, so I end up investing £700, £800, and it, it makes a difference, that's why I save and I'm as frugal as I am, so mm. I can invest more to get to the 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 uh, long term financial success, baby. Financial freedom, yeah, That's it. that goal quicker. So, That's but yeah, um, the the thing with um, living at home, though, I think um, so. For my case, I was able to, and you're the same. Um, throughout COVID, throughout lockdown. Mm we did nothing but work yeah uh we were actually frontline uh key workers because at the time because everyone was on furlough we never we were never furloughed it wasn't it, it wasn't our full-time job but it became it soon yeah. became it yeah. basically <laughs> we were doing our uh, we were doing our a levels at the time that ended mm. march 2020 and then it was suddenly what what now yeah work that we both had part time jobs and then it just sort of became full time. Um I deferred I applied to uni. I deferred my place because I thought, okay, I'm earning, I wanna continue. And then it was the most I'd ever earned and I was just working in the supermarket. Yeah. And because I was working from I was living at home, um, I saved like ninety percent of my income. I mean yeah. for me, for us, even though it was not a great period of time, lockdown was a blessing in disguise because it allowed us to save so much money mm. and at the same time invest a lot and make some on the bull run which was 2020 2021 yeah. we got caught in a very fortunate storm at that point given our position and everything that happened at the time i mean obviously um it's awful with the losses of everybody that died and what we all had to go through with lockdown but everything has a silver lining and yeah. that was the perfect storm because the market crashed to one of the lowest points it's been in like a decade everything was at a discount like I, I literally remember how it all started because that's what started the growth of the finance channel like I wasn't planning on going into finance when I started YouTube obviously I've moved over to travel now but 
I watched one of Graham Stephan's videos just pop up on YouTube, yeah. and then I just spent every lunch break and time at home just watching meet Kevin, Andre, Jig, just all the finance guys, and um, watching all the videos, learning about the stock market. And it was like hours of time. It wasn't work. It was just entertainment, but learning mm. at the same time. And we got into, like you say, the EV market, got caught in the bull run, which is good, but that was crazy. I literally remember sitting there on PS4 with you and Will, and Will's not, well, you don't care about being mentioned, obviously. And um, we're sitting there on PS4, looking at our phones. We had Neo, Xpeng, Tesla, Le- Tesla, Lee Auto, um, Electromechanica. <laughs> God, that's a, t- that's a touchy subject now. But um, like the market would open and we'd jump up like 400 quid. Yeah. And overnight, you'd make like 1.5 grand. That's one of the trades I think either you or Will made or something. And I'd, I'd run downstairs and at that point in time, we couldn't fathom how much we'd just made. Look, I'm not even joking. Like one and a half grand trade overnight is a monthly paycheck. That is yeah. ridiculous, and that's the extent of what we were doing. I'm not even joking. We were putting in thousands, like five thousand, six thousand pound trade, and all we were going off pretty much at this time was oh electric electric vehicle bull run they're jumping 20 percent every day before the market closes i'll put in 10 grand it opens the next day at half two and we're rich (laughs) and that was it and then the market turned and we're in a very rough point at the moment but it was good while it lasted and we are making crazy money during a fortunate point in time that we happen to be involved in if it weren't if it weren't for lockdown if it weren't for having the time that we had we well, we delved upon it a bit, but yeah. we didn't really know much. And if it weren't for that, I mean, a lot of this might have not happened. I mean, I might yeah. have not even... I, I, It was only because I had the time. I was only working two days a week, mm. um, 12 hours. I need... I was like, right, well, what can what can we do with this time? Yeah. For a little bit, we were like, okay, we'll play, go on PS4. Start a Minecraft world. Yeah. <laughs> Stay up till four in the morning, <laughs> which, which we actually did continue to do even by working like four or five days a week after that. But but it was at the point where we knew, right, what, how can we take advantage of our situation? Yeah. And for both of us, it was like, well, how can we make more money? Yeah. And how can we make it from home? And I think a lot of people were in the similar boat with that. But when, that's when we came across people on YouTube, mm. started reading books. I mean, I'd never finished a book in my life before I read rich dad poor dad yeah. i think that's the first book i've ever actually finished yeah. and that that was like a big um starting point for both of us so i highly recommend that if you've not read the book mm. rich dad poor dad um it's a teaser i'm, so I'm gonna do a video on books the benefit yeah. of books because there's a lot of benefits but yeah rich dad poor dad is the origin it's like the wolf of wall street as films for finance yeah. um but going on. back to so going back to having that time it was like okay stock market it was our it was the opportunity that we had in the time i i start i think i've put i don't know like 40 pounds in i've got a screenshot somewhere i put 40 pounds in i invested initially into travel companies because um i what i do now i actually got i applied for 2019 got it in 2020 and i lost it after a couple weeks because of the whole industry uh, suffering from COVID. I remember that. Yeah, I mean, you know the exact moment as well. Like we're literally on a break during a sick form, sitting in the co-op car park, which is round the corner from the sick form. Ben got a phone call from Tui, just saying that they had to cancel his position because they couldn't even maintain their own current staff. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's that was crazy. It took me a while. What it is, it's a degree apprenticeship in business management. I will cover a video on this, but I would highly recommend anyone to become an apprentice. If you if you don't want to go to uni, you don't want to worry about the cost of it, because that's exactly why we didn't. Mm. Um, and but you want a degree, go for a degree apprenticeship. They're the one thing I'd say is they're really hard to get, but yeah. if you if you can get them, it's it's it will set you up it, yeah. because for me so i applied for it 
three months it was a three month process for me mm. to get it initially you send off a form and then it's like online tests yeah like maths literacy and then you do and then you have an online test where it's a pre-recorded message and you've got bam you've got to quickly reply and then you have an assessment day if you get through that and there's all these steps and then i remember the assessment day i i mean i gosh i i was so nervous for it. i i couldn't eat i threw up before it uh <laughs> Yeah, it it was pretty bad, but um, I was so over the moon when I got it. But then I, yeah, after a couple of weeks, I lost it. But now, now yeah. I'm, I'm. That's now what I'm doing in my first year. Yeah. So it's good they kept you as a contact though. Yeah, definitely. That's really I'm, good. I'm over the moon. Well, it's it's a win win. I'm getting a degree paid for, and then I'm also earning a salary on top. Meanwhile, I'm actually learning. I mean, I mean it in an actual business learning real life skills mm. um i mean i was in i literally flew out to turkey two weeks ago for a conference waiting on a vid on that <laughs> or some some kind of and and, and i was i, I, I was out I, there i and scabbed it, it out with my business <laughs> i got an all-inclusive paid for I trip I, i'm an apprentice <laughs> right i mean i was 18 years old when i got this i'm now 21 but i would have been 18 and they paid for me to stay in this five star resort yeah. in Turkey, private beach, everything, that was so food, nice. everything, just sort of my own room. Um, I mean, there was a, there was a football team even staying there. If you know any football, Hamsick, there's yeah. one met. Um, but <laughs> little, yeah, that, little Instagram it, plug. <laughs> a bit, big big conference, big networking event. And I couldn't. But I'm with these people that are like directors of, mm. of two. And two is a big company. If you don't know, it's the largest uh, travel company in Europe. So um, there's people from that. all people yeah. from all over Europe are at this event. Yeah. I mean, the, we had a gala night. I was the only person from uh, who's English speaking who, as their first language. Really? Everyone else was yeah. Everyone else was uh, Germans next to me, Italian, Spanish. Yeah. So. That's why I'd highly recommend basically going back to my point about doing a degree apprenticeship because, but by working in an actual business, you'll get real life um, experiences rather mm. than you're at uni. You might do it. Yeah. You might have a part time job, but it's you're not really yeah. benefiting that way. And a lot of and tying into this, a lot of all of our work, all of our assignments, as, as for my course in particular, we don't do any exams. It's all one hundred percent coursework, and all of our coursework is about our company so mm. we base it off um we, we report to whatever Everything about about Tui. so it goes it helps our degree as well yeah. i mean everyone from the previous cohort got came out of a first everyone bloody hell and that's good isn't it and that's and it's, it's saying something so not only do you get a degree but you do well in it and then at the end of it all of them are now mm. pretty much working for the company. Exactly. And so. you haven't got £40,000 of debt to pay off over the next 30 years, which is yeah. another massive plus. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole structure of a degree apprenticeship is really good. Obviously, you have to get certain A-levels and hit certain requirements in order to go down that route. But that's what I was doing as well. I mean, I was applying to um, consulting firms like PwC and Deloitte, and I was... Um, literally at the second to last stage I didn't have it accepted like you did I was at the second to last stage um, of one of them and obviously Covid happened so and all of the applications and all of the positions just got closed straight away and yeah that was that and I thought right well time to work at Tesco's even more but the whole lifestyle of it going down as a degree apprentice and going straight into work was definitely more my forte and obviously yours as well because you don't have the debt of uni obviously not going to go into all of the pros and cons but you're not tying yourself down into a subject which you could potentially be a bit unsure on like that's why another reason why i didn't go because i didn't have like a dedicated course which i wanted to do yeah obviously if you want to be an architect or go into medicine and stuff like that or even a teacher um on that point you have to go to uni and you have to get that qualification um, in order to go into that profession. And by all means, if that's your dream and you, you want to go into it, do it. Um, it's not saying uni is a bad thing, but if you're unsure, I wouldn't say it's worth it because you can learn so much more from actual experience, like you say, in a job. But um, This yeah. was my way in, way into the business because, 
you think that I would be by the time I, I graduate, I would work there for four years. It's mm. a big investment uh, into that apprentice because they've spent time and money training you up because it's, it's all it is non-stop training. Yeah, and yeah. with my course as well, it's a rotational course. So I'm doing a different job every single year. So I'm work. I get experiences from different departments. It's a huge, huge company experience from all these different departments and areas. Mm. So I'm getting the, that's why, I, that's why I went for it ma- mainly. And the fact it's in travel as well. Mm. So there's perks of that. Um, I, it's something that I definitely recommend anyone to look into as an alternative if you still want to get a degree. I mean, for me as well, the reason by trying to aim to get a degree is kind of like a investment in yourself to then have like a a, a basis to then get another job to mm. then have that higher income. Obviously, my end goal is to not continue to work um, for somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's a case of. But I think everyone needs, as you said, everyone needs to work. You have to be in a job yeah. at some point, unless yeah, you're exactly. you 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 start really young at something like an online business and you do mm. well as a at a young age. But I feel like everyone needs to build up some sort of capital to do anything to make a business, yeah. invest whatever it is, take risk. Yeah. Take risk is the biggest point in the right way, not in the sense of oh, I'm gonna jump off a bridge among some rocks on the ground and see if I land in the right place but like in terms of starting businesses and investing in assets like now's the time where you want to get the experience not when you're 40 and you've got a mortgage and two little kids running around that want food on the table tonight but you can't afford it because you're 10 grand down in a stock but yeah now is the time to do it so going on to that so are you currently investing much at the moment or you kind of on hold because of the whole traveling thing yeah it's on hold now because like the income i'm getting from tesco's is just funding my travels but i haven't took and i haven't ever took anything out of my investments to fund anything so um and that's been the same for a lot of this year to be fair i haven't invested as much in 2022 as i previously did in 2020 and 2021 um, like you say, you're putting five hundred pound a month in. Like I went a period where I wasn't getting um money every month when I quit at the yeah. end of August, start of September, um until I started as a Christmas temp at Tesco's again, um like end of October. So I had like three months, two or three months where I wasn't earning anything. Um, so I just wasn't putting anything in. And then even with the earlier this year, obviously I've done like a load of travelling. Um, been all around the UK, especially with Roxby. Um, shout out to Will. <laughs> um, through the Travel Squad, um, which is like an online Facebook group, and I might meet up with some of them people when I'm over in Thailand as well. But obviously, when you're doing all those kind of things, you can't invest the exact amount which you wanted to. Yeah. But I don't know. It's not that. I'm not going to put loads more into investing um, going forwards. It's just that I didn't have the money to do it at the time. Um, well, I did, but I was doing it on other things because in 2020, all we could do was work, um, go to the beach and whatever, and life was very simple. There was like four things we did, but it was still sick because you just have so much fun doing those things, um, one of them being investing. But now we've had more time and we've got the freedom with the... <laughs> ending of being able to go to places i'm like right i actually want to live a little bit while i'm young so when i worked as an estate agent every weekend i was out i was doing something not out clubbing and stuff but i was another city i've been everywhere this year like brighton twice nottingham three times lincoln loughborough down south like everywhere peak district twice lake district all of them and Yeah, literally. And then the Croatia, Amsterdam, Magaluf. Well, we won't speak about Maga on here. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I don't regret any of it. And obviously that all involves money and I couldn't allocate yeah. everything to investing in the time. But I never liquidated any stocks to do any of that. There's no way. Um, so, I, yeah, I could have, I could have more invested. Um, and obviously I plan to keep investing, but I haven't. Um, as much this year purely for doing stuff but going traveling if i can find a way where say if like i've got a drop shipping site going at the moment which i need to allocate more time to because i'm making content and time is 
by far, I'm sure we can agree, the most valuable thing on earth. Hundred mm. percent. I don't care what you say about any asset, Lambo house, nothing, time. And once you find a business that you're really passionate about, you'll soon back that answer because like you say, you finish at five, you think, right, I've got to do the washing and do a quick shop and stuff like that, then get to sleep for tomorrow. I've got about three hours of time where I can eat and actually crack on with something. If I watch a film, that whole time is gone. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. Like, it's an opportunity cost. You have to be doing something, recording, editing, or building your asset column. So... Yeah, for anybody which is currently building their asset column in one way or another, you can fully understand that time is the main thing. And now, um, I've obviously got my dropshipping page set up and I built the website and everything. Shout out to the Ecom King for those who have heard of him. He's got a lot, a lot of good tutorials out there um, on making one product stores. Um, all I've got to do now is post ads on TikTok because I'm not paying for. Uh, yeah. there's no point just use tiktok organic for growth I might, I might promote one or two and if money starts coming in with that then i'll be set when i'm in um, thailand and traveling because like i said earlier you get a western income from the uk america whatever you get a high value currency coming into your bank account and you're spending it in a low um cost country like thailand you're laughing because that's what a lot of people are doing especially influencers because if you can start getting deals um, left, right, and centre, and start earning that money, um, yeah, yeah, it'll be so much better. And obviously, I can invest more then as well. So, on that note, in terms of drop shipping, yes. So you currently have a store. Yeah. And you, I got a store. I'm not going to mention it because a lot of the stuff I do, I keep closed, like behind yeah, yeah. closed doors, and. That's like ninety percent of me, regardless of what I post, is all private, especially family stuff and everything. So, yeah, I won't say or shout out my store name and what I'm saying. Uh, but where where are you advertising it? TikTok, hundred yeah. percent, and using TikTok organic. Yeah, yeah, and it's not just that you can use the exact same videos on YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels as well. And the benefit, it's all free. It's free. Yeah. You literally. You make one video, regardless of if the sound is going to get copyrighted on YouTube Shorts or not, you still use a trendy sound, do it well, whatever. Obviously, you've got to have a little bit of a nick for it in terms of making videos. Um, and, yeah, just post it on all three, the exact same videos on Instagram Reels, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts, and one of them will do somewhat all right at some point. But the main thing is just consistently, and obviously I'm being a hypocrite here because I've only posted like, like three or four videos so far, but I've been making my own content. So like I say, opportunity cost. But Because yeah. for me, my main, not concern, but something that is always playing in the back of my mind is how I can take advantage of my following on TikTok, on Instagram, mm. because... So, for those that have seen me before, um, I have... In, in the best way possible, by the way, not take advantage oh, of Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah. No, you, I mean, yeah, how, you, how can you, I monetize it further? Yeah, That's what yeah, I meant. exactly. How can I monetize... <laughs> yeah. How can I monetize my pages further? And I've tried affiliate marketing. Mm. Um, I've tried Discord chats. I've tried... A lot, lot of things, but it doesn't really seem to sell. And my, the hardest thing for me is knowing what to sell to my niche. Mm. And I've tried or delved into drop shipping a little bit. I made, I've made a store before, mm. um, but I wasn't. I tried making a whole new page and everything, but I wasn't successful with it because a couple steps I didn't do. I didn't have the product to my house. It was a big thing. Yeah, you so do I need that. <laughs> so I didn't make my own content. Yeah. I took other people's content. And the thing is, TikTok didn't yeah, push that's... it because I'm just downloading, even though I didn't have the watermark in them. Yeah. It still recognises it. Yeah. In the algorithm, it'll, it'll pick it up. Yeah. Especially if you're getting the content from different sources. Because if you just... Oh, we don't recommend doing this, by the way. And obviously, it's not going to have that much of a success rate, like Ben says. But... Don't just download 
one person's content and upload it yeah. or just download anyone's content because you can get in a lot of trouble for it down the line and Tate even says it, worry about the legal stuff later on once you've got money coming in, but still, I wouldn't recommend it. But, um, yeah, uh, like literally the only costs for drop shipping at the moment, and you can do this successfully and still make a lot of money, um, order the product to your house, let's say it's, what, 20 quid? Uh, no, not even 20 quid. Just get it off Amazon um, for, like, a tenner, however much it is, and pay your um, Shopify membership, which at the moment is £1 a month. I wish I had an affiliate link to plug here, but I don't. <laughs> £1 a month for three months, so literally nothing at all. Um, and that's pretty much it. And whether you're running another um, app on your website as well, like Luke's is like a product, I know, a review importer where you want to get them from um, AliExpress or even Amazon. You can just import the reviews, real reviews from people about the product, um, but the product is just sold on other websites, like I say, AliExpress or Amazon. So you're not lying to people about the product. You're just getting existing information and putting it on your store. Obviously, that comes at a cost, so that app could cost like a tenner a month or something, but you're literally looking like at an, a potential of so much money if your product takes off for... I'm not even joking, like twenty pound a month at the moment. If you can do it right with promoting the ads well on TikTok mm. and everything, so you don't so, think it's too highly saturated? Um, it doesn't make a difference. Obviously, yeah, there is that argument, and it's quite difficult to pick out products which haven't got existing stores. Like I'm sure you've seen, like the lava lamp, not lava lamp, the humidifiers sun lamp, and the yeah. sun lamps and everything, like the winning products. Yeah, exactly. They're really saturated saturated and you can see some accounts are actually verified now on tiktok um that are drop shipping pages you you can go wow. on them and tell or look back at their yeah, old I, actually, videos yeah, course, yeah. or whatever and um they've actually become that successful and gained like 400k followers that that is a full fully operating business now like that's gone from a small store i don't know what other methods have had promotion they use they could have done facebook ads and paid for promotions etc but they've gone from a small store and grown it that big that they are literally the monopoly for selling that product and mm. and what he said about saturation you have to do a lot of product research especially at the time of the year as well now it's going to be a nightmare if you want to start a page because we're literally by the time you even want to get it to your customer, you're not going to be able to do it because we're recording this on the 18th of December. You're talking 30-day shipping times depending on supplies you use. If you're going with AliExpress, it's going to be at least 30 days, which is the one downside of it and factor you have to take into account because you're competing against Amazon and stuff, which is next day delivery. And you've got to kind of hope in the nicest way possible that your customers aren't smart enough to realise that they could get it on Amazon and stuff, um, which is a little bit annoying. But it, like people still buy. Like you get like TikTok. You look at the average age of a user on TikTok. It's relatively young, and like you said, it depends on the product as well. If you're selling bottle openers on TikTok, you're not going to get as many sales as you would selling it on Facebook because yeah. the audience, and you've got to recognise that as well. So, yeah, there's benefits and drawbacks to drop shipping at the moment, and a lot of products and certain types of products are saturated, but you've just got to keep up to date with it, like hashtags like TikTok made me buy it, and looking at other websites. Well, um, I'm 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 actually looking into um, drop servicing. Okay. Which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's literally instead of the product, it's a service. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, with that, the main argument that people don't like with drop shipping or why it might not work is because of the delivery. Yeah. The the, the waiting of what have a long thirty days. Yeah. And with this, it's instant and. Yeah. A lot of people, what they do is they go over to Fiverr, they find someone that can. <laughs> I was going to mention this. If that you can do the service. Yeah, yeah. And you just sell them. You just promote yeah. them. You don't even need to contact them. You just promote them. Yeah. And that's something that I'm quite interested in looking into. Because, um, for example, I came across one that was heavily promote. They were uh, a service that offered um, templates for Instagram pages, and 
on Fiverr and they were selling them on on Fiverr and all they did this person was uh, I've seen other Instagram accounts do this mm-hmm. with the link in their bio yep yeah, or DM me blah 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 um I can get you these templates here's how to start an Instagram business but they'll just they'll just give them templates all right fifty dollars please and yeah. then on Fiverr it's what ten dollars yeah and they just take the profit. Yeah. No product, instant transactions, yeah. straight away. Yeah. And yeah, the exact same business model was used is pretty much the same thing. Like you get a Fiverr business, um, say if somebody's selling customised paintings or whatever, you go onto Facebook, you don't even have to tell the person on Fiverr that you're doing it, but everybody wins because if you're selling, you, you then go sell the exact same thing, like their business on Facebook um bump it up let's say 20 pounds like there's no like little cost in between there might be let's say let's just be really harsh or say there's like a five pound fee you still benefit a tenner from it someone buys it from facebook order it to this address whatever you just order it on fiverr put that person's address in as if it was your own and they just send it to them you're literally the middleman it's the exact same concept as drop shipping but a different way of doing it like you say drop servicing or still drop shipping in that case because it's a physical product like a painting but you're not involved at all apart from just selling it for the other person and you might think oh well that person could sell it for more and you're taking the money well that's on them like business is business like if you know what your business is worth you're selling it for a fiver on fiver um but you're selling 30 dollar paintings like well paintings which are worth thirty dollars, you gotta recognise that and go to a different market or just bump your prices up because somebody could not take advantage of it, but yeah, no, take advantage of it. <laughs> just make the money where the money can be made. So In yeah. terms of the whole having a side hustle mm-hmm. I think we could both agree on that it's something that everyone should at least have one, at least focus on one. 100%. Because, okay, you can work and then invest with that, Mm. but they'll only limit you to however much you're on a salary, whatever it is. Um, If you just focused on, I don't know, a couple hours a night, what we do. Yeah and slowly build some so in terms of side hustles what would you say your biggest one is then would you say that's what your main focus is that drop shipping no nah, it, it it would be well the side hustle the, that's probably the main one for you as well as a youtube channel is like yeah. actually making content and that's the main one for me at the moment like on my lunch breaks i'm editing videos um like shorts main channel videos whatever um, and obviously I've recently started it up again. Um, started like a month and a bit ago with travel, finance. Because you've got a bit of a following on TikTok. Yeah, I'm, I'm close to 10k now. So well, I don't know when this will be out, but I could hit 10k by this point. Or I might not have, I don't know yet. But um, that I will actually start earning money from it when I hit 10k because I can join the creator fund and I've hit the view requirement. I think it's like 100,000 views in the last 30 days. Yeah. Um, which I've hit. And yeah, they'll start earning money from it. And um, but then it's also because it's your personal brand. Exactly. It's, it's, um, because the difference with personal brand in theme pages, theme pages, it's more of a you 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 you're probably more likely to get views. You're more like it's something you can make this quick, and you can. You're very niche, and opportunities are scarce when it's a theme page. Yeah in terms of what you can do with it. Whereas once you've got a following about yourself, you can then pretty much go into any, not, not any area, but if you wanted to change your content, you can. And if you wanted to get opportunities with going places and get collaborations and business deals, you're likely to do that, which will directly benefit you, not just the owner of a theme page. So yeah, what you said about having a side hustle, that's definitely my side hustle. And I mean, you don't even have to earn money straight away from a side hustle. As long as it's benefiting you in some way, like say if I'm just making content and I'm not earning any money from it for the next five years, 
I'm still learning a lot of editing skills, social media management, etc., which a lot of people haven't been putting the time into. Mm. And the money at this point for me is just a bonus, and it will be when I start getting paid from it. Obviously, TikTok Creator Fund isn't the best source of income, so don't get too excited if you're um, yeah, getting into that area because they don't pay that much as I'm sure you know as well in comparison to the views that you pull in for the platform. But Yeah, um, so I think overall... Okay, so I think overall with theme pages and TikTok especially... The reason why I prefer them to Instagram, with Instagram you can get paid, you can run ads, or you can uh, have shout outs. And I've done that. I have earned a little bit through the account that I run. But for my main sort of source with theme pages was the one page that I have that is made, well, that's done over a thousand pounds, one thousand one hundred dollars, whatever equivalent. Um, but yeah, that was over a period of time. But uh, I think it's a good starting point for anyone that wants to get into like a basic form of editing. Because yeah. if you've never used anything, if you've never edited, I mean, now you can all you've got to do is have a phone, which most people have, get CapCut, yeah, get a clip from it. whatever, sword, usually, auto yeah. captions. You've got a, you've got a <laughs> clip within a minute upload that and yeah. just keep uploading it within a niche and then you're making money out of thin air that's why i liked it because it's just money like it's just it's, yeah. it's strange where it comes from you just think well how have i just turned something that's not my own reposted it and made money from it so yeah. uh, that's what i'd say of it and it's a good way to learn the skill of editing yeah. and content creation because then now with that i mean my YouTube videos, the first thing I ever made in terms of content creation was my first YouTube video. Mm. And that's awful. It's awful. Oh. I don't like it. I, I hate I, I just don't want to look. I mean, I, I, was, I thought about privating some of my old videos. You started on, on my first video. <laughs> but I, I, I think, I think uh, it's good to show your, oh. your roots, I think. So yeah. that's why I've kind of kept them yeah. as oh, a oh, reminder don't of... Don't delete it. Okay, that, that oh, didn't work out. This mine. is as a comparison to where I've come from to, and yeah. well I'm saying that I'm not exactly big but it's 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 still like you can show you can see the improvement basically is what I'm trying to say yeah exactly. and um but yeah it's a good starting point with, with editing and now that cuz I rarely posted my own TikToks I mean I I made a TikTok account in lockdown I'm sure everyone else did and made random tiktoks <laughs> uh, but now i've started to make them in my niche i'm starting to get a couple followers but I've, I've used all of that from skills from from youtube but also running the pages with tiktok so i think um oh boy i think for anyone especially who wants to earn a little bit extra i mean there, there was times i was earning i think my highest month was 300 pounds a month yeah. that's what i was pulling I th- and that fat. and that was when i was working at the same time yeah so it's not like i had all the time in the world and i was yeah. working full time um and that was just like a couple hours a night and i the reason being that i haven't kept that up is because of consistency really yeah. because i've had i prioritize other things if i'm not doing that okay i'm editing a youtube video if i'm not i'm not at the gym or i'm not doing that i'm yeah. scripting whatever it is but i'm always doing something but um I think it's just for me it's finding the balance of what I need to prioritize no. um because of all the side hustles we've tried whether it be reselling car boot oh, items yeah. um whether it be Come self on. drop shipping whether it be um Instagram theme pages TikTok theme pages mm. um I mean you recently tried um what well, options trading oh, yeah, as well day trading bloody hell um yeah that's crazy day trading because obviously we started investing april 2020 when we bought our first stock you said yours yeah literally like 20 dollars in tesla um, I, well, I, I bought my first ever share in anything when i was 17 with like with my money but it was my mum bought it for me oh uh, god but but <laughs> Yeah, well, I since don't have that now, but yeah, um, that that was my first taste. But it was it was nothing. It was like twenty yeah. pounds. Oh, but yeah, no, forty pounds was like my real start. Yeah, yeah. and oh, there's different types 
of investing and I'm not going to go into too much detail because it gets very complex especially for those that don't know anything about markets but you have a broker on your phone and you can either buy the actual asset itself which is what we're doing with our investment portfolio so you own a fractional share of that company and based on that company's performance or index's performance you can benefit from it for those that aren't involved in the investing world there's different types of investing obviously you've got the normal investing which is what we're doing for the long term which is when you buy and own the asset so you own a fractional share of the company you buy into or index fund and i'm maintaining that and i thought i'd go into the world of um cfd trading and cfd stands for contracts for difference so you're not actually buying and owning the asset you're buying contracts predicting whether the stock's going to go up or to go down and they're very volatile and one of the main differences from normal investing and cfd investing or trading day trading is that you can use leverage so let's say a leverage on a stock you buy is 1 to 20 you can put in 200 pounds and that 200 pounds is now worth 4000 pounds because it's a 1 to 20 leverage so you're not trading the volatility of 200 pounds worth of money you're trading the volatility of 4000 pounds worth of money um you don't have access to the loss of 4000 pounds if it went to zero you'd only lose 200 pounds what you've invested so you can't lose more than you what you've put in which is reassuring but you can make really good gains as well and it's very difficult and very complex and takes a lot of time getting into and um on trading two on two which is the broker we use i'm sure ben will plug his affiliate link here if you want a free stock feel free to click on it and get up to free to 100 pounds <laughs> or my one <laughs> no, no, no you can use yours obviously it's your channel but um yeah we use trading two on two and you've got um the cfd um platform on there as well and I used the practice account and I used a realistic amount. You can choose any amount up to £50,000 on practice. And I thought, right, I've got £2,000 which I want to allocate towards it. I'll use two grand. And over the space of a week or seven days where the market was open, I grew up to £2,240. But that was by having a live stream up, having Trading View, which is um, a website or an app you can get. Um, which is really good for graph analysis so the live stream was like day traders um traded tv dot live I, pl I plugged a lot of things in this <laughs> in this podcast just selling but stuff. yeah just selling everyone else um so i had their live stream up because they're doing it all the time and you can see the active trades they're making and the decision making behind it and they've got news coming in and everything um so their live stream um, trading view in front of me and then literally just my phone to execute the trades and I used a practice account for a week before I decided to move on to real money but with everything especially when you start buying assets with normal investing you get emotional with it when you first start hence why when we started investing we only used like 10 or 20 pounds for the initial trades because we didn't have good information on it or emotional intelligence mm. of how to go about it hence why when the bull run came about and um, in the ev market which we, which we spoke about earlier we'd had six months of investing practice and emotional build-up to know that right we've got confidence in this and we're not just gonna ooh, panic and everything so i think even I, now I with, to... with the with that with confidence um in investing we only really i mean we're still always learning i mean we we've now been in since what 18 17 whatever so what three yeah. years um, no, not that long it's 20 two and a half years two and a half years yeah it's, yeah it's actually it's coming on three years isn't yeah it? so damn it is so it's over two and a half years with that i mean a lot of people um they investing throughout uh, recessions and whatever mm. they will they will know with from experience that history repeats itself with a lot of things and people mm. um are more level-headed uh hence why i'm not phased at all and i will continue to buy in yeah. what i already hold because right. that's it but when it comes to options trading I mean, i i in day trading 
we we dealt yeah we we tried a bit when and we made money but that was because it was you could have bought anything i mean yeah, and I most mean, things were going up now what we did was swing trading because obviously yeah. we still bought the assets yeah and then just sold them when the market opened the next day day trading is like if we put that amount of money in on the daily mate well at that point in time on the ball run we would have made a lot because like i said with leverage if you put it in two grand on even a one to ten leverage you're trading with 20 grand like we would have made a lot of money but we were trading in a bull run and it's not um the natural representation of the market but like you said about investing um and how much i've learned from it i've probably learned the most about investing this year because at the moment i can openly openly say i'm down thousands at the moment because um the market is low and it's, it's all proportion what you put in as well exactly exactly um like i'm down thousands but i've put in a lot of thousands yeah. <laughs> to be down that much yeah. so yeah the market's not in a good place but am i gonna sell no yeah you don't lose to yourself <laughs> and like it's taken a lot of build up and experience to actually be okay to like i walk around i'm happy every day like I'm not bothered. I don't care. Like, because we've had that practice and experience with investing and I've still got so much to learn and as do you, like all of us do and we haven't been through a proper recession. Like, at the moment, I guess you can go, you can probably say we are going through one because we the, are, yeah. Like the market is down a lot and um, so we're learning a lot now um, to benefit us in the future but it's like when crypto was blowing up and you get Dogecoin, etc., etc., and people are literally making millions in a very short space of time. If you hadn't had investing knowledge prior to that, and that's literally what you came in for, and you made a lot of money, well, obviously we made some money in the 2020, um, but it's not the same in comparison. And you made like a good like 50, 100,000 as like an 18 year old and you mm. haven't lost anything before that, your expect expectations is so high and you've literally got no experience to match it that you could apply the same principles of, oh, right, this um, stock is blowing up on social media. Let's put all of my capital into it. Oh, I've just lost all the next day because it was a scam. Like you can't use that mentality for no. long-term investing no. and it takes losses to learn a lot which is another thing i know we'll speak about this at some point the fight i recently just had obviously i lost a fight but i'm very grateful that i lost a fight because i now appreciate a lot more things and i've learned 10 times the amount from losing than i would have if i won so yeah we'll we'll go on to, we'll go on to that yeah, um I don't I'll, want to I'll quickly dev on to i think from the whole uh investing side our strategy all along has always been because of our age, we could take more risk. Yeah. And I would not, I mean, none of this is financial advice, but I would not invest in what I invest in if I was 50 because no. there's no need. I, I think um, going back to what you said earlier about taking risk, you have to take some sort of element of what you have to. Yeah. It's more risk, not taking risk. Yeah. Um, so that's why from the start we went with more volatile yeah non-profitable companies <laughs> um but from from uh when we've, we've obviously done our research and we we back yeah. our opinions i mean we still did a lot yeah like we prioritized neo and a lot of the ev companies yeah. of which a, quite a large proportion of my portfolio is still allocated towards now yeah and i know loads of people like shout about diversity and stuff which is important to an extent but at this point if you properly research into one company or like a select few companies and put a good amount of money into them you're gonna make a lot more money than if you just put it all into an index fund and it takes a lot of time experience and dedication to learning about certain stocks and the conditions of the market to make good decisions like that so I wouldn't just, yeah, this is obviously entertainment purposes. It's not well, <laughs> financial advice, as we've mentioned a lot of times in videos. For me, so. it's always been, I don't know about you, but for me, it's always been able to get my first 100K. I think that's the 
that's the breaking point for me. It's like, okay, now I'm, I would, if once I hit a hundred K, I'd probably sell everything because for me, I know S and P 500. I know I can get mm. 10%, 8%, whatever from that a year. I wouldn't and, say that about the past year. Well, but, yeah, about the past year, but on average, but, that's yeah, that's the average the, return over however many yeah, years. The past 40, 50 years. Whatever, and yeah. I know so. that that amount of money, I mean, I, I basically, it's for me, for both of us, I think it. our goal isn't to have flashy cars or whatever, big no. houses. It's more about gaining back our time, gaining back our freedom, gain, yeah. being able to do what we want, travel, and not have to wake up, oh, I've got to go to work. Yeah. So for me, all it is, is the whole point and the whole purpose around investing is to, be, to is buying our time back mm. and having that money passively earned to pay for our living. Mm. Uh, so yeah. no, you... if, if I'm earning 10 grand a year, extra from the, from the stock market, brilliant. Like I, th- I think... I don't need to then take more risk with that amount of money. Yeah. So for my my strategy now is go in pretty much all in on the companies that I have researched the most, know about the most. What do you believe in? And and then just scaling that up, waiting and buying and buying. I mean, while it's completely, it's just ridiculously cheap at the moment. And every month, like I said five hundred pound minimum sometimes more um scaling that up to the point where okay uh i now have enough all in index funds yeah and then from that point onwards if i need to take out a little bit i can um and earn off any dividends whatever it is so or even just building it up building the asset up so much where you can then allocate it to other things if you wanted to get involved with property or and still keep say if you had 100k just keep like 50k in stocks but you wanted to start renting out a couple of properties use the other 50k to get two cheap houses you use the example earlier of like 25 mm. grand for a house deposit you just get two rental properties and start renting them out because then you've got the gamble of the housing market and stuff but it's other asset columns which you'll have to research into and mm. weigh your options with but by knowing so much about stocks, once you build it up to 100k, because it's going to take a lot of time, effort, and knowledge to get up to that amount of money. Well, I've, you I've, would have learned a lot. I think so. that. I mean, I've got, I've, I've, I've written. This is something I recommend people do as well. I have in a book written down certain goals I want to achieve, whether mm. it be subscribers, net worth, investment portfolio, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean. Uh, I've I I want so I'm doing an apprenticeship course now by the time I graduate I'll be 24 25 by that point I want to have what's a YouTube goal <laughs> well at the time of recording you on 2.4k subs yeah um or 10k I think, is clear I, th- I think next so. next year next year 10k yeah, is what I want 100% um and then the next point is well the the, the breaking point is a hundred k. I think if I got a hundred k subs, I'd quit my job. Mate, before that, before, before that, that, easily your first month you earn over a hundred quid, CPM wise, of being monetized on monetized on YouTube. Yeah, I wouldn't even say it's a sub- subscriber factor which makes you quit your job. If I was earning five hundred pound a month from YouTube CPM, obviously I've stepped away from my channel for a great period of time in comparison to you um so i haven't grown it as much so i'm on at the point of recording this this is quite a good thing because i don't know what will happen after we record it um i'm on 237 subs yeah but um yeah so i'm on 237 subs at the moment but if i was earning so i hit a k subs 4k hours watch time and i'm earning like 500 pound a month i'd quit because like I said, with opportunity cost and time, you're going from what well, from your position at the moment. Let's say you could do four hours a day, um, or if you average that out over the week. So Saturdays and Sundays you got three, but after work you've got three hours. Let's say you're doing five hours a day, which yep. is quite 
Um, it's, it's a good amount of time. Five hours a day on YouTube, even though you're having a full-time job, and you're getting £500 a month to 25 hours a week. If you double that to 50 your income is going to significantly go up because you're doubling your time on YouTube if you're doing 10 hours a day, which, once it's something you love, you love, which it is, 10 hours a day is, is like a walk in the park. And it's a compound effect, the whole thing. Mm, exactly. I mean, all of my... All of my income so far has been from older videos. When I say yeah. older videos, videos before I was monetized. Yeah, it's it's, it's ridiculous the, the effect. Put out it. on them, and yeah. yeah. So if I was earning five hundred pounds a month from YouTube or a long term, um, what's it? What is it? Asset. Yeah, a, a long term asset which is making me that amount of money. I'd give up my time and just do it full time 100% providing every other factor is still relevant as well because for some people it could be a grand a month if you start getting that um it's a lot better but if you're quitting at 500 pounds a month I'll have to go over this point you'll have to live below your means which I know we both do yeah <laughs> which I mean, is good I, um, I can I can live off if I was living at home for like 200 quid a month mate yeah um that Genuinely, I quit my job the first month, but well, I spent like nothing. There was weeks I'd go by without, like a whole week, Monday to Friday, I would not spend a penny because I'd just stay at home. Um, I would like drive to the gym, but I wouldn't have to fill up for another two weeks. So I guess you could take that into fuel costs, but I wasn't going out, wasn't yeah. doing whatever. I was literally sitting at home, recording, editing, go on a few walks and eat what was in the house. So I was it's a not way spending to do it. anything. It's a way to do it. As sad as it and, sounds, yeah. but stay at home. <laughs> be Control productive. the virus. Yeah. <laughs> Save lives. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, staying at home and um, live below your means. Yeah, because I mean, when was us and we went out? And we went out after your fight. Yeah. But like before that, but I didn't go out in eight weeks. Yeah. Because obviously I'm training for the fight. Actually, with exceptions to Halloween, I did go out on Halloween. Yeah, but for, for <laughs> me bad. anyway, it, it's the only time I go yeah. out of the house is if I'm going to work or I'm going to the gym. That's it. Yeah, and it might seem sad to some people, but it's a sacrifice you've got to take in order yeah. to get. Like, look at the progress you've made. Look at the progress I've made. Um, obviously, I haven't got it in subscriber count, but my video editing. You mentioned the first video earlier that we ever done. Mine was awful. Mine was god awful but now like my content i actually enjoy watching it myself and without dedicating that time and sacrificing that element of our life and i'll link more of this point in a sec we wouldn't get to where we are and we wouldn't have built up ourselves and our asset columns and it's not like we've sacrificed everything like i say about the stuff i've done this year i've been to festivals as well obviously You've come to Mag, you've been to Amsterdam, you've been loads of places. Like, it's having the perfect balance. It's either um, building our asset column and doing something which is going to benefit us for personal development, or it's having a sick time by doing actually going out somewhere. It's not just a cheap night out in Norwich, which is where we live. It's not just a cheap night out in Norwich, you spend 80 quid. You don't get anything done and it's just a throwaway weekend and you don't do anything it's never that it's either doing something really productive or going out and like a festival or something it's yeah. the best of both it's no like half hour sit down watch a film like i haven't got a ps4 in my room now yeah um I, I, actually i do but it's in a bag under my bed and i haven't yeah. been on it in over a year and a half probably a bit more than that because I just, I don't know, I'm wasting time, I'm killing time, which I could have either going out and doing something sick or um, being productive and benefiting my future. And a lot of people need to, and I say need in a half ass way, because if you're not bothered about it, then you're never going to do it. But if you are bothered about it and you're not doing it, you need to start cutting that time off on playstation and cutting time off watching films and not doing anything with your life to build your asset columns because if you don't you ain't going to get anywhere <laughs> like as harsh as it sounds you just gotta sort yourself out so. you just you just can't solely rely on a job no. the basic 
you basically. Can't. I mean, even if you you are, you have to do something. Even if it's investing, making your money work yeah. for you, you have to do something. You have to do the research, whatever it is. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't touch. I, I since I moved out, I haven't taken anything with me. I don't play any games and nothing like that. No. Um, I might watch a film now and again, but that's like once a week, if mm. that. Probably not even that. Um, and the thing is, you you get to a point where you feel guilty. You feel guilty about doing something you know is unproductive. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, right, I'm lazy. Like, I'm feeling lazy. I need to do something. Like, for example, this week I've been at Centre Parks. Yeah. I took my my iPad with me editing every night because I know I can't. It's, to me, it's like, oh, what? Well, I'm on holiday, but I can't. I don't want to take time out because it's yeah. everything. You need to keep up with momentum mm. with everything that you're doing. Um, I take a week out and suddenly oh I've, I've fallen back on uploading I've fallen back on yeah on um so um I have to always be and it's a it's a good like mentality to have to always keep wanting to be busy as well yeah um so but yeah I mean I I in terms of the whole YouTube thing with that I would recommend it to anyone I mean I mentioned this before but I'll say again that all you if you have a passion for anything, even if you don't want to show your face, I mean, you can now uh, script any video with chat GBT. Or, I've been like, using that recently. Yeah, it's, 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 it's dumb. That Give you... me a good Tinder pickup yeah. line. Oh, <laughs> but that's, that's the thing, that you, you can, yeah, there's no, there's almost like no point. excuse with what like is available now to make videos with. Yeah. You can get free software on your phone. You could literally, I mean, I, I've started one thing that I'm, trying out at the moment is a faceless youtube channel and mm. that uh linking all the the platforms i have together to this youtube channel trying to make um a bit of extra money on there seeing how that's going but i've seen other channels they're making like over 10 grand a month yeah, that's crazy and all they're doing stock footage audio insert it into insert it into cap cut automatic yeah. lyric, um automatic um captions done and they've got a video oh they can monetize that and oh they've they've got what a hundred thousand subs on whatever page they have you just um, gotta think what is there to lose yeah like if you are scared like you say about showing your face what is there to lose you've got this massive company obviously it's owned by google which is paying a very good amount of money to people to make content on their page you haven't got to show your face and got to speak if you don't want to you can get an ai voice generator like you say yeah so for me for me personally i think that youtube is the would be my priority and i found that for me it's kind of still if i had a purpose it would be to continue this more like a purpose in life yeah i know it sounds quite deep but i think that um from the get-go i wanted to sort of try educate and try yeah. not mainly educate mainly more inspire for people to well inspire people to start investing start thinking about yeah. about it especially at our age because we, we were 19 when we started mm. or well, yeah when we were started and um i think even now i mean at the age of 21 i mean people are, are becoming more successful at a younger age as time goes on, it's coming. It's becoming a thing that's more and more. That's a happiness thing. About, that's, yeah, but yeah. I, I think that we're still really young to even be talking about a lot of things that we are. So, um, but yeah, in terms of YouTube, I wouldn't. I can't ever see myself giving up. I mean, that's that's the one thing I would not. No. And if I had to pursue it, really pursue anything, it would be, it would be this. Yeah. Um, so I, I couldn't imagine not making content in some way like i know i had a big break from youtube but in the meantime we're still doing dribble videos and for those who don't know dribble it's a group channel which myself ben um, and two others started last year um we're not consistent on that for a number of reasons but we'll come back and do um group content at some point in the future but even when i wasn't uploading on my channel still doing stuff with dribble still editing in some way or being involved with 
like online sources of income because that's when I was doing my theme pages and stuff like that. So, um, and I was always thinking about it. I was still like editing my own content. I just never really uploaded some of it and I wasn't passionate about what I was doing. But like you say, long term, I don't think I can't like just stop it completely. I, I don't see myself just not doing it and that's because it's a passion it's like people that play the guitar they do skateboarding or something like they find it so fun um they just won't be able to give it up and that's another point i wanted to mention as well if like obviously we're speaking about our personal preference with online ways of making money if you've got a passion which you're really good at like if you're like i say like a really good skateboarder but nobody knows about it just start up a TikTok mm. page or just try to find a mate to record you or something and just start posting the videos. You don't have to do any editing at the start. Just put videos out there and see what happens. Because if it starts blowing up blowing up, and you're like, oh, you know what, I could just continue doing this, you can make a living from it. People can see you, they can reach out to you, brands can contact you and you can start making money from your passion so even if it isn't like sitting down with a mic like we do now and um try and help people out um and make entertaining videos to an extent if you want to call it that um even if it isn't directly speaking to a camera if you can video um what you do as a passion um you can make money from it and just convert it into something brilliant which is really good in my eyes money money aside i think another really good thing about youtube is the fact that anything you post unless it gets taken down which it would only get you would know about it as soon as you post it it's on there forever yeah. like it doesn't get deleted and yeah. i think it's more of a okay this is this is getting quite <laughs> we're getting deep <laughs> um, it's good i'll go there i, uh, I like deep convos okay. so it Think of it as like I see it as a as a time capsule. So let's say I have a video, right? My first ever video, I was nineteen, now I'm twenty one, whatever, and I'll continue mm. to make videos as I get older. I speak to my grandparents or whatever, and um they they will go on about stories about their past. They'll delve into you know what they did as a kid, but they can't prove it to us. As a grand as someone that's as young, like a grandchild that's like five, and you're listening to someone, and they're telling a the story, they don't really have that perception of, oh, they understand what they're saying because they haven't lived in the same time period. Yeah. Um, whereas with us, I could just go, watch yeah. this. Like, it's, I cannot <laughs> see, I can't, I just can't, yeah. a company this big and a platform this big, I can't see it ever being a thing where it doesn't exist anymore. I um, mean, 100 years in the future, who knows? But I think that it's not going to go anywhere. Um, yeah, at least the idea of it. Maybe it might not be just YouTube. It could convert, like, I know loads of people have moved to Rumble following tape, but something to do with a big video platform. Like like you say, YouTube is such a monopoly in that sense. Yeah. I can't see, like you say, it, well, it, it depends from a creator point of view if it's still beneficial in yeah comparison to being on another platform but the whole idea of it i completely agree with like oh here's what we've done in magaloof yeah yes yeah <laughs> which but, i don't know <laughs> but it's like it, my my family watch my videos and they're like as soon as i go on holiday um or whatever that's why i like making videos about that my experiences because i can go yeah this is what i did i don't have to tell them what i did i just show them a video and yeah. that's i find that's like a really nice way of that's why i like i like vlogging even though it's not something that we do but i like the idea of it because it's shown no experience it's just very hard to grow in that niche of just being just yeah. being like a vlogger so yeah, you do um, have to niche down a little bit yeah so i i mean for me my struggle is just finding my feet on what content i make and i think it's the same for most people starting out mm. i i mean one thing i have i always have i mean right now i've got like 50 video ideas in my head i always have a yeah. list of a lot so i can always like, right i can do the next thing i'm on to the next thing so i don't have to yeah, think yeah. about it and i have a gap in my content but it's still like okay do i okay i'm posting a lot about tiktok 
do I want to stay posting about TikTok? No, mm. I do want to transition to other things, but it's something at the moment that I'm working on, and then I'll slowly transition. Think of a big YouTuber's KSI, whatever. Yeah, they start on FIFA. Then Modern they... Warfare. Yeah, or Modern Warfare. Yeah, Modern there you go. Warfare. Like, um, now look at does he, he, he would never upload a video like that ever again. But that's what he started on. That's what yeah. he grew an initial audience from. So I think for me, it's um, it's finding out what my obviously p- posting what my audience want to see, um, and it's good that I I'm actually starting to get video ideas from my audience because. Already, I post a video today, and they're straight away, I'll oh, make a series on this. Yeah. Uh, start posting videos on this. Yeah. I'm like, okay, right, I'll do it. Yeah, give me a chance. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but it's good. That's what I like, yeah. and that's what it's I want. It's a community. It's yeah. building a community. And, um, but I think as time goes on, I'd like to transition over to more content. I've thought about making another channel because it's like because like we're heavily into the gym as well i thought mm. about having just a separate channel for fitness but yeah. then i thought well i kind of want to incorporate it into the same thing because mm. it's just me um because i find it'd be easy to grow that way but i think i'm just gonna see how it goes with things like that but i've done a couple of vids with the traveling side of what because that's yeah. another thing i like doing and um some of those have done well some not so so good so um but i think as a whole with youtube i think it's the best platform to um create and have content on there permanently because you think of think of the algorithm of youtube videos are all constantly being pushed out the matter when you uploaded it mm. so um for example one of my most viewed videos i uploaded well over a year ago but still getting views as i speak right now because people are yeah. it's a search engine evergreen you go on, content yeah you go on instagram reels might still get views but they'll eventually die out tiktok eventually die out um mm. everywhere else it will eventually die out whereas yeah. with youtube videos especially with evergreen videos they're gonna still yeah remain to get views so that's why i like about it as well it's like for example, if you've got a bit of technology um, and let's say the GoPro Hero 8 will go back a couple of editions of GoPro and you can't afford to upgrade your GoPro so you want to see a tutorial on how to do a certain thing on that GoPro, like set it up. You search it on YouTube, how to set up the GoPro Hero 8 um, as something you put in the search bar. The recent the videos that are on there aren't going to be within the past year because it's an updated GoPro. It's going to be the top videos from two three years ago whenever the gopro came out and it's people like that so say if you titled a video um i've got about going to amsterdam which was very good by the way go go and watch it um amsterdam was amazing and at any point in the future people are still well hopefully going to be able to go there yeah um and it's a traveling video and like you say, it's a bit different from the finance content, etc. But it's evergreen. Like, you just vlogged what happened in your point in time. And before we even went, we were watching videos about people in Amsterdam. Like 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Literally 10 years old. And um, it doesn't matter about the time frame. Obviously, in contrast to that, we've done time frame videos about the best stocks to buy now during yeah, the Yeah, that, that, that was like sort that, of our but... initial plan with it. Exactly, and at the time, the videos can spike a lot because it's a trending thing and they can do well with certain stocks and obviously market crashes, etc. But um, long term, they're not going to do the best. Yeah, that's but... a, that's a, the, the two strategies of YouTube. You can post content that will get you what George just said, post, uh, you'll get your views that you post initially and then they'll, they'll spike up, you might get... Mm. I think the most I had was like a thousand views in a day, but now as you start to post videos, it will take you a long, longer time to get those views. But it's worth the wait because mm. it's it's all a compound. You post one video, okay, you get a couple of views, but not that many. You post another video, okay, and then people might go back and watch your other video. Yeah. That's why I'd say if anyone's starting out a channel, there's this um, theory that if you initially start a channel with three videos. This is what I would do now if I started again. Mm. I'd post three videos and then... Like main channel videos. Yeah, all at the same time. So that way, someone would click on the first one. They're more entitled to watch the other two. And that way, you've already got three videos that are are bouncing off each other for views. So, 
you're going to grow a lot quicker. Whereas you've yeah. got the one view, uh, the one video, you might not necessarily get the reach. So um, yeah. that's literally what that combined with shorts. Shorts is such a mm. good way to grow, and we've both realised that recently because obviously I I'm growing my TikTok account, um, but at the same time I'm uploading that as reels to Instagram and also on YouTube, and some of the shorts like within like a day they just blow up. Yeah, short and form content is a way to go. One hundred percent. It's so good because attention span has just changed entirely and platforms like youtube and instagram um are just pushing more of that content because more people are watching it rather than longer forms of videos like um even tate said i know i've mentioned his name a few times but he spoke about a lot of these topics that we're mentioning like when he's watching a tutorial video like how to fix this on your car or something and the, at the start of the video, the guy goes, hey, my name is Andrew. Yeah, today I'm going to show you. Yeah, skip, skip, skip. Don't yeah, care. Yeah, you just yeah. want to get to it straight away. And previously, two years ago, three years ago, before TikTok, I'd probably watch all of it. Or genuinely, I probably would have maybe skipped a little bit. But the majority of people would just watch it until the point which is relevant. But now, like I've even ca- caught my parents. And my mum was on YouTube Shorts um, rather than TikTok. But every platform is using that because they know everyone's brain has just been rewired to it and it's scary because that attention span can be applied with everything like if you've never read before and you try to get into it the pace of reading is so much slower than just scrolling through your phone and you haven't got that dopamine hit all the time and Mm. applying it to a lot of other things in your life is quite dangerous um in terms of like how you're behaving and your mental state going forwards because just putting your phone away from yourself which is another point i guess we can speak on as well just screen time and yeah all of that kind of stuff like it's dangerous how tiktok has rewired everybody but i would i would suggest hey-ho. if you're on tiktok be on tiktok t- to provide content create content not yeah. consume because you can so easily get full, you fall in the trap and you lose a couple of hours of your day and you think, well, what have I just done? Like I've yeah. just, and you just continue scrolling. It's not, there's, there's, it depends because there's a lot of educational things on TikTok as well as YouTube. Mm. So you can use it for that. So like we've learned a lot ourselves, a lot ourselves just for YouTube. Yeah. Um, but as a whole, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm guilty of it as well. Like yeah, I think on TikTok, yeah. especially before I was prioritizing content. Like in 2020, when TikTok came out, obviously we started the channels in 2021. Like it was a yeah. way to pass time, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You literally kill two, three hours. Um, sometimes, like at the worst points, just sitting there scrolling. And then one question, which is always good to ask yourself when you're sitting there watching them, is: Can I remember the last five, ten videos I watched? No. So what's the point? What are yeah. you actually gaining from sitting there watching this? And we'll probably clip this as well. So if you're watching this as a short, <laughs> get up and do something. But at least we're making you aware of it. So, yeah. God, that's scary, man. But yeah, I, I think um, uh, overall, yeah, you, YouTube's a goat. If you want to be a... Uh, if you want to be like a creator of any sort of content and, and then go to YouTube first. Yeah. So, and I think um, in regards to the shorts, personally for my channel, I've uploaded, so over the past month, I chose not to upload any videos. I uploaded six shorts and I've gained way more subscribers, views. Yeah. I mean, the views aren't, the, the thing is I'm sacrificing there is the income because I'm not earning from the longer form of videos. But mm. they've gone; those views have then gone on to my other videos, yeah, it's so it's promoted effect, them. It? Yeah, exactly. so um, yeah, I think shorts will be the. A lot of people would agree and have mm. said this that if you're probably if you're starting out on YouTube, maybe start with shorts. Now, um, another thing to mention, which is related to everything we're saying, is the people around you, your network. Your network is your net worth, which is a well-known saying. And we're very fortunate that we're quite scarily similar in a lot of ways because we can use each other 
as motivation and also to help each other. Like, yeah. It's obviously a bit of friendly competition. Like, mate, when you're doing well, I, I love it. I'm not going to swear. Sorry, I've ever nearly swore. <laughs> like, I love it. It's sick. And it's motivation for me to keep pumping out content as well. And I can look at editing techniques, especially Callum, because Callum's editing is far better than mine. Um, yeah, shout so, out to Callum. Yeah, big shout out to Callum, um, who's also part of Dribble. Um, I can look at editing techniques and just see where I can improve and stuff like that. And we're all speaking about it like we're doing now. Yeah, this is just how we speak to each other on a day to day basis. It's more of an insight to people, especially to people that know us, whether it's through school or whatever. Just how we behave with one another. Obviously, there's the other side, mainly the drunk side. <laughs> whenever we have events, but whenever it's not that, which is ninety nine percent of the time. We're all speaking about self improvement and yeah. just how to get better with like our lives and how to benefit our future. That, that's so. the thing we've since school and especially since coming out of twenty twenty, um, our so social circle has been so small. I mean, yeah. there's now we would not speak to more than like this. There's the six of us, yeah, and then that's it. There's no we might be we've got colleagues. We've got people that got family. Mm. We'll have mates that are from that we've known from school, whatever. Yeah. But the six of us is really sort of for me anyway. The, the sort of the, the the small circle that I'm in um, mm. because we're they're the only people that I know that are actually uh, as serious as us when it comes to money and yeah. life goals, whatever it may be. And I mean, I'm not going to say any names or anything, but you look at some other people that you might not be friends with anymore and you think well yeah i know it's it a... makes sense because they're, they're, they're just not doing the, the same thing they're not yeah they're not they haven't got the same ambition no no you know if that's what they want to do they don't want to yeah exactly it's not knocking anyone else but it's just you've got to look at who's around you and think do they want the best for me are they benefiting my yeah. future yeah and all of us do we're all just a powerhouse of friends and we're quite fortunate to have fallen into each other's paths but i feel like the way you go you'll naturally gravitate towards each other those anyway. people yeah exactly because like um we've cut people off or whatever and with distance from others covid was a big factor of that um because like we were in sick form and then out of nowhere we're not in sick form and we can't meet up with anybody like the rule of six got introduced months after lockdown started and for boys we were on playstation and that was our social hub for yeah. ages and whoever was in your playstation party you just got close to it's like who you're meeting up with on a day-to-day -day basis at school and if you're not speaking to anybody over the mic you're just getting further and further away and we kind of locked down if you pardon the pun on our group of six sorry that was awful <laughs> and we locked down on our group of six and yeah it's just we've all come so far in on the past two and a half years and i love it man i, I can't wait we, we are definitely moving in at some point <clears> together because that's what i say about who you're surrounded by like you're some of the five people you spend the most time with another well-known quote and well the reason why we know these quotes is because like, i don't know we live it like, we hear it all the time we watch content on it mm. and if we all move in together productivity will go through the roof it'll be amazing like, we mentioned it earlier didn't we youtube i've came to network with other people as well as mm. on that and i've had invites recently to go on a podcast as well with other people and doing tiktok I've, I'm constantly speaking to people that own other pages, and that we're constantly always helping each other. Right, this is the mm. best method. This is the best time to post. Like all these different, um, yeah, all the, these tactics, whatever. Um, and a lot of people have asked me to make a Discord, which is something I might do, um, mm. just like a free Discord for everyone to chat and sort of network. So I think definitely with doing something like this it, again, with the, what you said going into the direction going into a certain direction you're going to come across certain people and um you'll end up benefit benefiting off those other people mm. so yes you are right network net worth is your network so network is your net worth same thing <laughs> same thing anyway um final question 
sort of last couple of minutes. We mm-hmm. didn't mention too much about the fight. I was just going to say, just briefly touch on that. George yeah. was recently in, um, where, you, where you can yeah. talk about it. An MMA fight. So first time I've ever stepped in the cage. And yeah, eight weeks of training for a charity event, Cancer Research UK for Ultra MMA, which is the company. It's mm. free to sign up, free training. All you got to do is raise £50 for Cancer Research and sell 10 tickets, which is one VIP table. Yeah, and that's it. You get an occasion, they give you your training twice a week. And I've never done anything like it before. Obviously, I've kept up with the gym and I've done a bit of shadow boxing at home. But other than that, I've never been to boxing or MMA, nothing. So I was completely new to it. Um, I haven't dropped my video on the fight yet. Coming soon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was amazing. I loved it. I've enjoyed the event. Obviously, appreciate your support because you recorded it. Yeah, boy. Um, and everybody turned up on the table. And yeah, it was sick. I wasn't nervous at all. Um, it was just adrenaline pump. I lost. I got tapped out in the second round. But I'm grateful that I did lose because, yeah, I did mention it earlier. Um, I can just look at everywhere where I went wrong. Whereas if I won, I wouldn't look back at where I went wrong. I'll just appreciate winning. And almost like... It's in comparison to heartbreak from a relationship, the motivation I've got for Jim now yeah. is losing that fight. And boys will understand for those that have, well, you can recently <laughs> relate to it. A bit of breaking news. But um, yeah. yeah, like the motivation of losing the fight, it kind of sunk in two or three days afterwards where I thought, oh, it would have been nice if I won. But I'm so much more dedicated now in terms of fighting and getting there than I was beforehand. I don't know. Well, then I then I am now than I would have been if I lo- if I won it. So, yeah, I'd recommend it to anybody. It was sick, and I got in really good shape. So, yeah, that's another big point: physical well being, which I know you mm. like to keep up as well. Yeah, boy. Um, well, Tristan and Andrew Tate, they'd argue anyone should just learn. Uh, a uh, mar- well, martial art or martial art. yeah yeah as a, as a go to yeah well there'll be more on George's channel on all of this that we've talked about we are pretty much out of time I've got no batch even no space <laughs> yeah. left to record so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this this uh, podcast um, if there's something you'd like to see we can always do more of yeah. and um, yeah see you in the next one take care thank you very much bye